Okay, welcome to Two Point Perspective. Now, Two Point Perspective is a type of pictorial drawing. That means it's a 3D drawing. 3D means three dimensions. So you can see length, for example, in this Oxo cube box, the length along the front, the height, and also the width from the front to back. So three dimensions, length, height, and width front to back. Now what we're going to try and do is we're going to draw possibly three different views using perspective techniques. Now the also box isn't important, what's important is that you understand that what we're trying to draw is a little box. Okay, it could be that way up, it could be that way up, or it could be that way up. It doesn't really matter, it's a box. So I've got a fresh sheet of paper in front of me. The first thing I need to do for perspective drawings is to put on what's called vanishing points. For this exercise, I'm going to do two point perspective, which means I have two vanishing points. So I'm just going to take my sheet of paper that I've got here and I'm going to put one vanishing point about halfway up the page, which is there, and I'm going to put another vanishing point in line with it across here. I'm going to call this VP1 for vanishing point one, and I'm going to call this one VP2 for vanishing point number two. Now, what I've got to do is decide whereabouts my box is going to sit. It may be that it's going to sit down here in relation to the vanishing points, or it could sit in line with them, or it could sit above them. So what I'm going to do is show you three different views of it to show you what the difference about where you place the box and where you place the vanishing points to see the different effects that you get from it. Now the first thing we have to do is draw our leading edge, and that's this corner here, the one which is closest to you or is leading the shape. So we're going to try and draw that shape and I'm not going to measure it, I'm just going to draw it roughly in proportion. And again I'm going to use my orange pen so that it stands out and I'm going to do it above the vanishing points. So I'm going to come to this point here, I'm going to take my set square, I'm going to move up the page and I'm going to draw just a line, roughly the length of what I think that box is going to be. I'm then going to take my straight edge, I'm going to go to the top of the shape and I'm going to draw a straight line back to vanishing point number two and I'm going to draw a straight line back to vanishing point number one. And then I'm going to come to the bottom of my leading edge and I'm going to draw again, these are orange construction lines, a straight line to vanishing point two and a straight line to vanishing point number one. Doesn't look like much just now, we've got one long narrow triangle this way and one slightly skewed triangle going that way. But remember our box that we're trying to do here, it is here, we've got roughly the height so what I have to do is estimate the distance that way and estimate the distance that way. Now I'm just going to do it by eye, I'm going to say it's about that distance and about that distance. It's in what we call proportion. That means it looks about the same size and shape as it is in real life. I'm going to take my construction line now, join that to there, slide that along and join this one to this one. So I've now got, and hopefully you'll be able to see, the leading edge of the box here. And if I put the, put the box the proper way up, if you can see that I've got the O on this side, and this side would be the X. So that's sort of how it's looking. Now what I have to do is fill in this part here because this doesn't look quite right, there's something missing. So what we have to do is go to this corner and this time we're going to crisscross. I'm going to take a line back to vanishing point one, go to the opposite side and my ruler is just long enough. I'm going to take a line back to vanishing point number two. Now hopefully again what you've seen, there's the O on this side the X on that side, and if I tilt the box up you can just see there's a barcode on the bottom, so that's kind of the bottom edge that I've got there, so there's my barcode under there, which corresponds with what's on the box. The last thing I have to do is line it in. Back to my black pen again, very quickly, line it in, and you'll notice that these lines are not parallel, 
These lines are all going back to a common point, so they're going at slightly different angles. The only lines which are parallel are our vertical ones. And there is our oxo box. Now you notice because the box, the leading edge was placed above the vanishing points, which are out here, the leading edge started off above it, so what we've ended up seeing is the bottom of the box as well. So, what happens if we put the leading edge below the box? Some of you, I guess, will have figured out already what it is, but just in case you haven't, I'll put my vanishing point, sorry, I will put my leading edge, and I'll put it on this side. I'll move it to the side a little bit, and I'll put my leading edge down here. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure you can actually see that on the screen. So once again, go to the top point of the leading edge and that goes back to both vanishing points. Across here and across here. I go to the bottom of my leading edge once again. It goes from here to vanishing point one and it goes from this one to vanishing point two. Once again I've got to estimate how long the box goes in that direction and how wide it is from front to back in this direction. And again I'm just going to estimate it. It's about that distance and about that distance. Take my set square again. Join the top and the bottom together. And once again join the top and the bottom together. Once again I've got something missing in the top. I've got a face going that way and a face going that way but I'm missing this top face. So what I do is, once again I crisscross over. A line going that way and a line going that way. Hopefully you can now see we've got one face of the box. If I put my oxo box back up again, this is the X face. This is the O face, and this time we've got the top surface, which you can just see here, and that should have an X on it, just like our box has here. Again, finally, what I have to do, go back round with my straight edge. I know I'm doing this really, really quickly, but two-point perspective drawings kind of work that way. They are quick things to do. So I'm going to do all the lines which aren't parallel, but which are sort of parallel. Make sure I join at the corners, that I don't leave gaps, and especially that I don't cross over. Very few things mess a drawing up as much as seeing the lines crossing over at the corners. All it really says is, I've rushed this far too quickly, and I can't be bothered doing it properly. So don't do it. Do it properly. We spent all this time on it, don't cross over at the corners. So there I have my box, looking quite good.